Why is there a pillow on my screen? I thought this was a keyboard channel. Why is this a pillow review? Howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and you know what? I'm a little bit tired, so I'm gonna be taking a nap. Yep, it's a nap review with Hippio Tech. All jokes aside, what if I did something really unhinged and took this budget keyboard and tried to make it better with foam from a hundred dollar pillow? Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, that's insane. You're going insane. Well, yes, I am. But that's not relevant because I'm going to be taking this budget keyboard, the EK68, and filling it with random objects to try and make it fog. Like pillow foam or carpet or hair from my cat. Okay, that last one was a joke, but... Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Epo Maker, who provided this keyboard, but did not review this video before uploading or give me a script or whatever. Now, don't worry, we'll get into the pillow foam, and don't get mad at me for how I say pillow, but this keyboard is actually going to be surprisingly good stock, or so I've heard. Now, starting at $89.99, it's in that Goldilocks range of pricing where it's a little bit cheaper than the $100 keyboards, but also a little bit more expensive than stuff like the Womir SK71 which is aluminum, by the way. So keep that in mind as we go throughout this video and as Nola goes throughout the box. You know, some videos, Nola sleeps for the whole time I'm filming and sometimes this is my life. So while Nola cleans her feet, let me ask you a question and comment your response down below. How much does a keyboard have to be to be considered budget? For me, it's very relative. Now, this keyboard comes with some accessories like a braided USB-C cable, some spare keycaps. Oh, is it gonna be built? And three switches. Oh, I sure hope it's built. If it's only three switches, that's gonna be a bit of a problem. And my favorite type of keycap and switch puller, which is a fantastic touch, just like Nola eating cardboard. Nola, we can't keep doing this, dude. To answer my own budget keyboard question, though, it's kind of relative. Like, if it's a budget custom, then sub 200 is great. But if it's a pre-built, then I feel like it needs to sit somewhere around 100. And then there's mega budget, which is like sub 100 or sub 50, I don't know. Now, this keyboard has a couple very interesting features, which we're gonna be talking about soon. Now, the first interesting thing is that it comes in at 90 bucks, but it also comes in a different layout. So European gang, this keyboard does have an ISO option. Uh, it's like the first time I've ever pointed that out. Now, I'll have the keyboard linked down below, but it also comes in a couple different keycap profiles and colors. I won't get too into it, but if you want your keyboard to sound a little bit thockier, I recommend going with the SA profile, and if you want your keyboard to feel a little bit more comfortable, then go with the Cherry profile. I'll also be using the Wisteria linear switches in this build, which we'll look at in just a few minutes. Now, for some reason, I did not record a clip obsessing over the knob, so we're just gonna glance over that and look at the flippy feet. Personally, I love flippy feet because I like to change my angle if I'm gaming or typing. I literally use them every day. So this is a great touch, and I feel like more keyboards really need flippy feet. Like, do not at me. Now, the initial feel is, wait, like, a little bit better than I was expecting, honestly. Now, I'm very curious if the pillow foam that I put in this later is going to absolutely ruin it, but the gasket performance on this thing is surprisingly good. If you're new to keyboards, gaskets are a little strip of foam or rubber sometimes that gives your keyboard a little bit of a bouncier experience and a little bit more dampened typing feel. Sometimes. <laughs> now, usually in cheaper keyboards, the gasket does absolutely nothing, so I was surprised to see that it did something, kind of like these stabilizers. Also in budget keyboards, generally the stabilizers are incredibly rattly, and these weren't perfect because they're plate mount stabilizers, which isn't the best, but they did actually come pre-lubed, which is very nice. Speaking of pre-lubed, these Wisteria linear switches from Epo Maker are not perfect, but they are pretty decently factory lubed. They kind of remind me of the Gateron G Pro 2 series, where they have a little bit of spring ping, but overall feel relatively smooth. If you took all of these apart and lubed them yourself, then you would get a significantly better experience. But as you can see on the stem, there is quite a bit of lube there. There's just a little bit missing on the springs. So maybe if you took all of these apart and bag lubed the springs, it could be perfect, who knows? Now, if you look into this black hole very carefully, you see a hot swap socket and a south-facing LED. And if you look at the back of this keyboard, you'll see an option for Mac and Windows and also two different wireless modes. As far as the wireless modes go, I tried out the 2.4 gigahertz for a day and it was relatively good. I think the plastic case definitely helps with the connectivity, so I'll give it a plus for that, just like the Epic Gamer RGB. Now, I need your help at home here. I'm taking a look at the case and I cannot see any screws or how I'm gonna get this thing open. So I'm just gonna stall for a second. Uh, leave a comment down below. While you guys leave a comment, let me take a look at these keycaps here. Now, I only got the Cherry Profile keycaps, which are very cheap double shot PBT. 
Also, there's some squishy foam by where the spacebar goes, which helps the spacebar sound quite a bit better. These are the stereotypical double shot PBT keycaps that you tend to get from China for like 25 to 30 bucks. Now, having those on a pre built keyboard that's under $100 is relatively nice. Because they're double shot PBT, they're gonna sound a little bit clackier than like a die sub PBT keycap or a little bit clackier than a thocky SA keycap. But with the RGB going, this black and gold color profile is very pretty. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, Hippio, it's been five minutes and there hasn't been pillow foam. I'm gonna comment something angry. Well, if you do comment something angry, it'll help boost my algorithmic engagement. But let's set a baseline. Here's what the keyboard sounds like before any mods. Now, it's not perfect, which we might make it perfect later in this video, but it's pretty decent right now as a baseline. The switches have a little bit of ping, and the case sounds a little bit hollow still, which we're probably going to fix. But there's still one core problem, and that's I don't know how to get the case open. So I know you need to take off the knob, and I know there's literally no screws. So the only thing I can think of is maybe forcing this guitar pick into the case. Maybe that's going to work. And here's where this keyboard gets a zero out of 10 on the modability scale. Okay, maybe like a three and a half because it's still a hot swap keyboard. So you don't need to solder or desolder. But anytime that you have to essentially damage your case to open it, I feel like that's uh, that's what we call bad. The method that I found to be the easiest to open this thing was using tweezers and just absolutely forcing this case open which did damage the keycaps a little bit, so it might be best to take some of those keycaps off first. But this was significantly more effective than the guitar pick method, which I tried for, God, was it like 20 minutes before realizing that this could be a possibility? Am I stupid? I might be stupid. But as I talked about before, what's not stupid is these gaskets, which are very, very pillowy. Now, some people don't like side gaskets, so you could always tear those off. And looking at this plastic case, it's very plastic, but it has like an almost metal finish, so you could you could fool yourself, I guess. What I thought was most interesting about this though is that the gasket cutouts on the plate are really big. Like most of this board is having gasket contact, which is probably why you don't actually get that much plastic noise typing on this case. Now, after struggling with three wires, we get to see the foam that this keyboard shipped with, which is remarkably thin and also not fit to the case very well. I was honestly expecting a little bit better. Like some cheaper boards nowadays have perfectly custom fit foam and that just felt weird. Also, in this board, we do have a battery, so I can't necessarily recommend you try this pillow foam method that I'm gonna try at home. Now, you might be wondering, why would you fill keyboards with random objects to try and dampen the sound? And that's partially half because I'm a very chaotic human being, and half because I think it's really interesting how different materials affect the sound of a keyboard. So, I've got two different things to try here, and the first is a carpet anti-skid rug thing. I don't know the actual technical name for it, but it's got this rubber bottom and then a felt top. I'm thinking the combination of materials could potentially make the board a little bit thockier, so I'm gonna try that out. My thought is anything that actually fills more of the case than the included foam should provide a more dampened, thockier sound. But after testing it out, this didn't really work as well as I would have hoped, so I had to go back to the drawing board. And by the drawing board, I mean my $100 pillow. Now, this is a pillow that I spent $100 on thinking that it would make me sleep better, and then it was so uncomfortable that I didn't actually ever use it, so it just kind of sat in my closet being very shameful. So, pillow review, uh, it sucks. Don't buy the Coop Home Goods pillow. But an interesting fact of it is that the pillow opens up and you can remove or add as much foam as you want, which, believe me, I tried that too. Don't even comment it. But the foam that came in it is this really nice shredded memory foam that can pack super, super well. So, my thought is here, I can fill the keyboard up super full, and then it should compact down, forming a really tight dampening layer. Maybe, I hope. Now, honestly, I filled this thing to the brim, so I'm not really sure that I'm gonna be able to get it closed, and this might be a trial and error type of thing. Like, I had it seriously overflowing with pillow foam. And also, as I mentioned before, I don't recommend you try this at home with a keyboard with a battery, as it could be a fire hazard. I personally haven't had any issues with it, but I know some people have. But just to be safe, I'm going to be taping the back of my PCB with a little bit of electrical tape. Now, the real moment of truth is, is this thing going to close? And oh god, it's literally floating about an inch above. So I'm just going to force it down with my really strong rock climber hands. Rock climber hippie, by the way, even though I haven't rock climbed in six months. I really want to rock climb more. It just gave me such bad tendonitis. And oh, wait, it actually just closed. Well, 
I guess that is a perk of the clipping mechanism. I didn't even need to take any foam out. It just closed based on the force of my incredibly strong forearms. Now, if you remember from the sound test, the spacebar sounded pretty bad, so I have a quick fix for that. I'm just gonna yank it off. And instead of filling it with Play-Doh, which trust me, I've done that before in the past, it works really well for about a day and then it dries out and makes you sad. I filled it with a little bit of Kill Matt. And don't worry, if your name is Matt, we're not trying to kill you. It also sounds a lot better. Also, if you were wondering, the gasket performance did not change that much, even by stuffing this thing with that much pillow foam, as it's such a flexible foam. It kind of just turned the whole entire board into a gasket mount, which is kind of cool. Now, I'll give you a sound test in just a minute, but I do think this keyboard is overall pretty interesting, albeit not quite interesting enough for me to tell you to go out and buy it right now. So anyways, here's the sound test. <laughs> 